Good morning. Welcome, everyone, to Admiral Markets webinar. My name is Chris, and today's focus is on strategy using wave analysis specifically. So looking forward to that. I am a big fan of waves, as you know, and uh, it's not as complicated, I think, as it seems. It's basically focusing on impulse momentum, in other words, and corrective phases. So those two uh, distinct ways of looking at the chart, impulse and correction, are the heartbeat of the market and those are the main kind of ways to analyze price and uh, you know it's very valuable in looking at patterns and reading price action and understanding the market structure so when you understand impulse and correction you're halfway to understanding wave analysis um, and i think that is a, a, a giant step forward in fact not only for wave analysis but for your trading as well before we kick off, though, be aware that this uh, webinar and later on recording is shown to a global audience. Check out AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact the appropriate entity for more info on that uh, and to find out if it is suitable for you and other details. Also, be aware that trade, please be aware that trading for exchange of global financial markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the device of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer, and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. In today's uh, focus, basically, we're looking at trend and momentum uh, in the in a four-step uh, focus. First of all, you want to know what the trend direction is and the momentum uh, is going to. Then you want to take a look what opportunities could be available, like fibs or patterns. Then we're looking at filters. Are there any support or resistance levels that uh, could stand in the way of a trade developing and last but not least if that's if all the first three steps have green lights then i'm looking for what area would i like to see price head to before i trade it what could be the trigger before i do trade it and what is the reward to risk once the trigger happens at the decision zone and is that good enough for trade All right, regarding the calendar, let's take a look. Economic calendar shows that we had uh, you know, news from China. We are having some lighter news from Europe, as always. And for later on from the US, we have a Bank of Canadian interest rate decision. And tomorrow, we have the same for the pound. Plus, a Friday, uh, I think there's a, well, actually, there's a press conference tomorrow, I believe. Or well, Friday, the Bank of England governor is speaking again. So there is a, a lot of pound news coming up. That's maybe perhaps one of the reasons why the pound moved up so strongly. Maybe some shorts that are uh, basically uh, seeking some profit taking before uh, you know the event that um, we are going to have tomorrow. That's maybe perhaps one of the reasons why. But whatever the reason, it did move up yesterday and uh, it uh, strongly showed a bullish momentum so what could that basically mean within wave analysis what does this bullish upside indicate is this a trend reversal or is this a correction within the downtrend so from my perspective at least at this point i'm still seeing this as a correction uh, let's take a look at the wave analysis that i showed this morning and see what i have there all right so the title of the wave analysis pound dollar waves explain first bullish rally since Brexit. You can find a wave analysis each morning around, well, it's around uh, 6, 7 a.m. British time. You can find it by going to admiralmarkets.com, clicking on analytics, going to wave analysis, and you'll find other analysis like technical as well that uh, Nenet shares regularly a few times a week. And you have other good things like a trader's blog that uh, Nenet and I write. Um, there's a heat map, market sentiment, educational tab. You'll find a lot of good, good info there. But anyhow, back to this wave analysis. And you see, if we then zoom in to, all right, let me use a, uh, let me quickly sorry for this folks. It seems to, I think, uh, freeze up when I have a webinar somehow. I'm not sure why. Ah. Okay, well, I'd rather 
Still seems to be a bit on the slower side, so let me use this one. All right, there we go. So for the moment on the hourly chart, I'm looking at a wave one, two. Here is a wave four, a bigger wave four ending. And you see a one, two, three, four, five, a truncated wave five. Uh, in this case, I, I do think, which means that basically there is not momentum, there's not a price action to push for a lower low on wave five. Doesn't happen often, but sometimes happens. In this case, I probably do think that that happened. And at the moment, I'm explaining the strong upside due to a wave two. Wave twos do see strong corrections. Therefore, uh, I'm seeing this as a wave one, two in pink. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the downtrend has been so strong that I do not think that the pound weakness is over as yet, especially considering the fact that the there is a chance that the Bank of England might decrease the interest rate tomorrow. So from that perspective, I would expect weakness. You know, if you tie these things together, the technical plus the fundamental, um, I'm favoring a downtrend continuation. So the only way I can explain the downtrend continuation at this moment is by a wave one, two, uh, because a wave four cannot be explained due to the strong bullish momentum. All right, so the wave four that I had yesterday is invalidated when price basically broke above this bear flag. Yesterday, we were looking at the break of the bear flag. I said, I think it's going to be a false break. Well, it didn't. We had a, a, a true break. And one of the ways I said to keep an eye on that was to take a look at this four hour chart and see if we get a four hour candle breaking above uh, the trend line. Now, I think I had it this way. I'm not sure how to draw probably like this. There we go. So we did get the breakout candle. This candle, as you can see, the close was very near the high. It was a strong candle. So everything in that candle was informing us that a breakout was going to happen to the upside. My preferred way to tackle that trade was for a breakout back to the trend line um, at the very minimum. I was looking for a move down to the 38.2 fib or 23.6. Well, that didn't happen. So although the breakout did occur, I didn't uh, you know, trade that. Uh, if you were to have taken the retracement of the candle, if you were slightly more aggressive than I, and you took that retracement, for instance, uh, then you might have had a good trade. Probably you did because price did move away from that candle. So if you were a tad more aggressive uh, than, um, than I with the entry, then you would have gotten a good trade. If not, then you missed this, but that's, that's okay. Those things happen. Price is, in the meantime, back in that resistance box we talked about yesterday as well. All right, but as I said yesterday, if price is showing strong four-hour candles, it will not necessarily turn around. And we don't see any you know, signs of weakness. We see continuation of bullish candles. Uh, basically, this was bullish, this was bullish, bullish, very small bearish candle, bullish, bullish. So, so far, no indication of four-hour chart of any turnaround. For me to consider a turnaround, I would need to see the next or this candle, basically something like this. And then there's a bigger chance that price indeed could make a, a correction or, or downside for that matter. All right. So back to the wave analysis <clears throat> on a four-hour chart. I'm looking at, the, at it this way, basically, during the Brexit, of course, a strong fall, strong push down, wave one, two in blue, then the three, then the four. So within four, I think we're going to see extension. Uh, sorry, within five, we're going to see extension uh, at this moment. Now, if price breaks above this 100% level at 135.30, then the bearish scenario is out of the window. And you know, I'm going to have to reanalyze this. And I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe the downside is over. I don't know at, the, at this point. I don't want to speculate. Depends on how price, uh, basically how price breaks this 135.30. For the moment, I think it's a wave one, two pink within wave five. And we're going to see an ex basically an expansion of the wave five uh, within via or with a five pink wave. Um, and this is wave one and two. All right. So. On the hourly chart, you can see that 
the trigger, the signal for us wave analysis uh, analysts and traders that this is not a wave four was the break of uh, the bear flag right here. All right, that was the spot that price should have turned for downside if it were to be a wave four and a wave five after that. Well, it didn't. It pushed actually not below the bear flag, but above it. That was the warning uh, that upside was coming and we could see a steeper correction indicated by this channel. The first warning was actually at the break of the downtrend channel, but that was not enough for a counter trend trade. It was a first warning, but the real confirmation came with the, bear, the break of the bear flag. So that's the wave analysis side of things. From a trading perspective, all right, I would be looking, I think the most interesting is shorts. But the problem is we do have a, a big event tomorrow. So there is substantial risk involved, uh, you know, from a kind of a news event perspective. So that is something that you might therefore skip or B, you might want to take very low risk if you do trade it using very small margin um, because of the volatility that a news event could bring. Those are a couple of options there uh, that you can think of. Now, set that aside for a second, right? From, from my perspective, from a wave perspective, uh, the best trades are to look for short at 133.80, 133.75, 133.90, 134 area right here. That's the 78.6 fib. It's a deep fib. Now, technically, the best stop loss is above the invalidation spot, which means 135.45. So that is about 170 pip stop loss. And I realize that's that's large. But the wave three target, well, uh, you know, that let's say we aim for a conservative target, which is back to support. That alone would be about 400 pips. Now you can even aim further than that because if this is a pink wave one, two, uh, it should go further than that. It should break the bottom, in fact. And uh, price should fall. Let's put a fib to have an idea. To the minus 61.8 target that's the minimum we expect probably the minus thousand target but you know these are very very deep levels uh and it's difficult for us to imagine so if we want to be more conservative in our profit taking 126 125 are are probably better targets to, to aim for even if because we want to find a target and entries where regardless if our wave analysis is correct uh there's still a good chance that price will go there so one of the tricks you want to use is if you do wave analysis, you know, calculate what you think is the most likely a scenario, but also try to think about alternatives and try to see if there's confluence between those alternatives. So, for instance, for whatever reason, if this is not a wave one, two, right, but a bigger correction aiming for the support level at 130. Is, is good because even if this is an, for whatever reason, if this is an ABC like this and you get bigger upside, you're still taking profit even if it is a B. So that increases your chance of hitting the target. Or if the alternative is not a uh, one, two, but if this is somehow still a wave four and we're going down for wave five, then wave five could stop at 126. Therefore aiming at 126 also still increases your up your you know your chance of taking profit so trying to find you know even for instance if this is an a b c or this is a one two three taking the breakout taking a turn here for downside in both scenarios is worth trading to because we in both scenarios expect downside so Having your, having a, you say your top notch and uh, wave count is good. Thinking about alternatives and seeing where there is a match is also very handy because then you get confluence and there is a higher chance that that particular trade 
will develop correctly despite what the wave count turns out to be. Those are the better trades, right? Doesn't always have to be like that, but if you know if it if it does, that's great. So, alternative to basically the seventy-eight point six fib is the eight eighty point six fib. Of course, that is about one thirty-four fifty probably. That could be a good turning spot too. Within that wave two, it looks like we're we're completing a wave C, uh, wave five of C basically. So we're completing the momentum to the upside. Uh, so I would expect price to still push a bit higher up to those fibs, still kind of roll along here with this channel, and then basically turn at these fibs, break this channel as well, and start falling. All right. So that's what we would expect from a wave two. So if we go back to the charts now, dive into the one hour chart. All right. And you can see a bit of hesitation already on the hourly chart, it's kind of slowing down. And that's a good sign, but uh, we would still like price to push up just a tad for the turnaround before the turnaround happens. But we're not sure if it gets there. I mean, it was already close to the 78.6 fib, so it might not happen. If price would not go up to hit that target and instead breaks this channel, then we got to also realize that price might not get up to the fib, break the channel, and start falling like this already throughout the day without even reaching that fib. So that's the alternative. If price does not reach the 78.6 fib or the 88.6 fib at 133.75 or 134.50, the alternative would be a breakout of this channel. A breakout would have, from my perspective, would need a four hour candle pushing below these lows here, right here. I would like to see it close below that level on a four hour candle like that. Then I would like to see a retracement, preferably see kind of a head and shoulders pattern like this, a turnaround at the right shoulder, and I think we could see a bigger fall from there. Looking for head and shoulders patterns, uh, like on this hourly chart, I think are good ways of trading turns at, uh, at FIBS. Especially if you have strong momentum prior to it. You got strong momentum here. So, you know, we would like to see basically price on this hourly chart kind of, oh, sorry about that. Basically, Make a bit of a dash here, perhaps like this, then slowly retrace up, go back to 133, make this head and shoulders here, and then turn for a downside, a bigger downside. That would be an alternative trade um, for the uh, reversal to the downside. If price does not break below these bottoms, these bottoms here at 132.20, 132.40. Let's say price respects these levels and this hourly we still see a doji or a bullish candle. Then I think there's a serious chance that price could still get up to that those fibs and uh, still make one more push up. All right, but considering uh, the last hour, considering the fact that you know the last hour was pretty bearish. I do want to say that uh, the chances of price getting up to the, those larger fibs, those deeper fibs, is uh, definitely decreasing as we speak. I mean, two hours ago when I was doing the wave analysis, this candle was not there, so you just have to imagine, don't, don't look at these last two candles, and we see this, the chances were substantially higher that price could go up there. Now, definitely lower, definitely starting to look more like that we're going to get a breakout pullback continuation but we need price to uh, to break below i would say 132.40 before that seems more likely and then hook back to 133. all right the euro dollar is in a big consolidation so let me even show you the one hour chart now from a four hour perspective this is at the moment a bearish count obviously due to the momentum to the downside and uh, price is now going sideways so within that wave two that we're seeing here there's a big consolidation as you can see a lot of sideways movement a lot of trend lines a lot of uh, consolidation within that consolidation though uh, yesterday we were talking about the upside price didn't go as far as i would hope for i was talking about 111.70 um one maybe 111.50 
price only reached 111.25. Um, that was part of an ABC correction. Now we made it ABC down. I'm expecting price to bounce off the support for another ABC up back to uh, resistance and fibs. Now, if that does not happen, then I do think that we're looking at a breakout, potential breakout to the downside, but price would need to break below this trend line. And even then, there's a lot of support levels to, to consider like 110, psychological round level 110, of course. So for me to trade any downside, I probably need a four hour candle breaking and closing below 110. <clears throat> That's the only way I can trade downside. Otherwise, I would still expect an upside from these support levels. But I need a, a four hour candle, I would say, because we do have strong four hour bearish four hour candles. These are just you know minor, small minor candles. Um, that could have been maybe the start, but looking for a bit better candle, maybe like this, for instance, that could be an indication, bullish engulfing twins like that, that uh, price is bouncing off support. And I would expect a rally to go up to 112.50 probably. but at the very minimum, I would say to go up to 112, no, 111.50. All right. Dalt again. Very aggressive upside. Talked about it yesterday too. If we get a four hour candle above it, uh, I think it was, let me check. No, that was in Monday's video, sorry. Yesterday we were, I'm getting a bit confused. We were looking here. So yesterday, uh, basically, let me go there. On the five minute chart, we were looking at the five minute chart. X, uh, here and saying we need a retracement on the five minute. Let's take a look at that. Right here in this in this part, we we're saying we we're looking for a retracement. I wouldn't be surprised if that would be an, an impulsive ABC zigzag. So we did get a bit of impulsiveness here, as you can see. So that turned out to be true. Uh, and then price made it basically retracing back to that zero line. I told you yesterday how important that zero line is because that indicates the uh, the completion was likely of a retracement. So that happened indeed right here. And we got a good continuation from 103 uh, all the way up to that 104.40 I was talking about. So perhaps you took that trade to the upside uh, as a, a break pullback continuation trade. There was a good potential as price went even higher to test 105, which ultimately was the turning spot. So that was good from, I mean, yesterday it was a good um, analysis. So hopefully you managed to, to capitalize on that in your trading as well. So that upside basically created a big momentum as the breakout suggested. And we are hitting the 78.6 fib as well. For the moment, I marked it as an ABC rally, but it doesn't have to be. This could be also alternatively, this could be the end of a bigger correction. So I think it's a good shorting area now because even if this is a downtrend, if this is a downtrend, it's a good place. Even if this is an ABC zigzag, price should go down for B. Once again, we're looking at confluence here um, you know, from a wave perspective. So I think dollar yen looks you know, better set up for a short than long, obviously, at this point. Just like uh, yesterday, I think that the long looked good despite the downtrend. Today, I think shorts look more interesting. So let's take a look at that. Looking at price action. All right. So yeah, we do have a strong momentum. We've got strong bullish candles, but we got a couple of bearish candles in a row. And we broke the high, the low here of this candle. So I think slowly but surely we could see a retracement of that, that swing at the very minimum. This is a counter momentum trend trade, so this is always risky. Um, and we're furthermore, um, you know, showing probably, yeah, strong daily candles as well. So that's definitely, a, a, you know, a risky side of things. Therefore, 
aiming at the 38.25 at 103 is probably the safer target, even if it retraces only yesterday's candle, uh, it would still reach the take profit. All right. Now, the danger of a trade like this is the fact that the hourly is showing so much bullish momentum and the fact that we're almost back to the to the middle line here on the hourly chart. And uh, from that perspective, it is uh, not looking that good to trade it to the downside. Um, maybe I'm just thinking out loud here how I would be able to trade it. Maybe the breakout of this trend line with an hourly candle below it like this uh, could see the follow through, a bit of retracement, could see a turn back and then fall down to the 38.2 fib. But I would definitely expect to bounce at the 38.2 fib. Or at least, let me say it this way, I would count on it for my take profit. So the only way maybe to trade it at this point, I think, is to, to wait for a good breakout on the hourly, wait for a bit of a pullback, and then take that continuation to the 38.2 fib. Because otherwise, considering the momentum, this could easily turn out into a triangle. And who knows, price could, if, if it's showing momentum like this, and if it's showing a consolidation like that, then it could easily continue with the previous momentum and show a new upside momentum after the triangle break. So you don't want to mess around and, and uh, start taking counter trend trades if these kind of formations are, are appearing. All right. That's always we want to be careful with. It would be different if price were maybe a bit more impulsive here. Then in that case, uh, and, and less impulsive here. Those are two important factors, I think, at this point on the dollar yen. So yes, price is at a resistance spot. Price could be at a turning level, but that itself is not enough for reversal necessarily if we see such a strong momentum. So I want a bit more confirmation on the dollar yen. So from these three majors, uh, to me, once again, your dollar looking like a bounce above 110 but if it breaks and closes below 110 then we could be looking at a bearish breakout pound use the push up higher to those fibs good for a turnaround or if it doesn't push up higher but breaks then looking for head and shoulders for more downside dollar yen looking for basically well either a break pullback continuation for downside Or if it does break the, a triangle, then a potential breakout to the upside. But that one has substantial risk, I think. But it could be, okay, continuation of the momentum for a push up to, let's take a look. one hundred five eighty six, which is the 88.6 fib. So this is... Basically, how I would you be, you know, how I use wave analysis to derive to potential uh, trades uh, up on the euro dollar despite the correction, even perhaps down, um, down on the pound, but not up at this point. I'd be careful of the news event once again, and probably down on the dollar yen. Mostly down, but a small breakout to the upside potential possible. Also, the 88.6 fib, by the way, could be a good turning spot as well for shorts. Does anyone have uh, any questions from uh, on these majors, from a wave perspective or just technical in general or anything in general regarding these majors? Regarding the Aussie, in the meantime, let me move forward here. Uh, let's take a look at some other currency pairs. Now, I don't do the Aussie. I just do the three majors, you know, wave analysis on the three majors on the website. Uh, but doesn't mean we can't use the uh, wave analysis. It's just that uh, I don't have a count 
uh, on our website there. But yeah, basically, if you want to keep things simple, of course, you can primarily just look at five waves and clear three waves at first and then slowly but surely kind of build that detail of wave analysis as you go along, right? If it's not clear, you might skip it. Only if you think it's very crystal clear, you might use that as, as part of your analysis. And also I want to be clear that wave analysis itself is a supportive tool at start. Use it basically just to enhance your understanding of the market structure without strongly using it for just use it as a tiny part of your analysis for, for trading decisions. And as you get better at it, as you get more confidence at it, you can start doing it more, more detailed and use it more for trading decisions. What I see often is people using it right off the bat without you know, enough experience and then blaming wave analysis uh, when trades uh, go wrong. Uh, well, basically, wave. Uh, we're using the one hour and four hour charts for wave analysis because on the website, because it gives, we do it on a daily basis. So if we would be using daily candles, right, uh, daily chart, there would be not enough things to show on a daily basis. That's why we also have long-term wave analysis. That's once a week on Mondays, but that is only once a week. So because we want to help traders with wave analysis every day, you can't use daily or higher. It would be too slow. So you got to use lower time frame charts, uh, like an hourly, four hour. Now we could, I mean, theoretically go down to 15, but then things kind of move fast and we would have to update it more often. So one hour, four hour, I think is an ideal for showing wave analysis on, uh, um, on the, the website. That's why. Uh, now, from a, that's wave analysis. From a trading perspective, uh, you're looking, it depends. You don't have, there are different ways of trading this. That's why I always am trying to add which time frames I would use for trading this. It really depends. For a dollar yen breakout to the upside, I would be trading on a lower time frame, 50 minute chart. All right, I would not trade on a higher time frame because there's it's a small trade. Uh, if if I'm trading um, the pound dollar turnaround, I think you could really trade it on multiple time frames. You could trade it on a 50 minute chart. You could take an intraday continuation here, but you could take a swing trade on an hourly four hour aiming for lower or even a position trade aiming for lower. So this is quite universal. I think it's, you know, various ways of tackling that on different time frames. Um, on a euro dollar, I would not take an intraday trade to the upside here because we see bearish candles. So I would look for a four hour, one hour confirmation signal. All right. But the thing is, once you get a four hour candle like this, you can take a four hour trade, but you don't have to necessarily take a four hour. It could be a 50 minute trade too. You could try to take a retracement here, zoom into the 50 minute chart and basically look for retracement and continuation and try to exit that trade at the end of the day when it here, uh, basically, you know, 5 p.m. London exit there with the profit. So although the analysis is done an hour to four hour, doesn't mean you have to trade it on those time frames. Uh, you could wait for those triggers and then take the trades on lower time frames um, as well. If you do take them on four hour hourly, it could take basically anything from, depends how aggressive you trade manage it. If you're aggressive in trade managing it, it could be a couple of four hour candles, right? Because if you get, for instance, small, Let's take a look here. You get two red candles and then a blue candle. And then you get the retracement. And then you get a continuation and a continuation and a continuation. So you get four candles like that. And if you trail stop those lows, 
you're in it five six candles in a four hour chart so you're looking at one day two days um so swing trades like that intraday intra week swing trades could be anything from one day to four days probably right um if you want if you're aiming for if you have a loose trail stop and you're aiming for a big target it could be it could be a lot more than that but i tend to be more um more aggressive in my trade management so for me it's more uh shorter if you are more passive then it uh, it will take longer. Uh, the correlation matrix you can find. Correlation matrix you can find right. Uh, the market heat map you can find actually correlation. No, the correlation table is actually part of MetaTrader 4 Supreme Edition. Here we go. So it is uh, an extra uh, 60 features, actually, the MetaTrader 4 Supreme Edition developed by Admiral Market Systems uh, ourselves. And basically, you know, they're all kind of things like alarm manager, correlation matrix, indeed, sentiment trader, session maps, uh, all kind of terminals, uh, order history, ton of things, um, specifically made for admin market traders. You can test it for a month if you have a demo, but after that, it's only for, for live account holders. And uh, this is how it looks like, this correlation matrix, you can see. So if you're interested in that and testing it, the best is to go to platforms, click on MT4 Supreme Edition. And then you can test it for free. It's a plugin. There's some explanations here as well about you know all the features, not all the features, but some of the features. There's too many, really. And I'm sure that uh, you will uh, definitely appreciate some of them. So take a look at that, MetaTrader 4 Supreme Edition. That's how you find the correlation matrix. If you're looking for the heat map, then you want to go to analytics and go to market heat map right here. And if you're looking for webinars, you want to go to education and then webinars. And then uh, regarding webinars, Nenneth will talk about his price action trading school. Tonight, tomorrow, we take a look at how to trade effectively with popular chart indicators, by the way. And regarding the correlation matrix, we can see that uh, basically your dollar, dollar Swissy, not surprisingly, your and pound, not so much correlated at this point. You see little or no correlation. Positions can, on these symbols, will tend to move independently. So, of course, we're looking now at uh, a certain time frame. You can change that. Right here so you can see different time frames different bars as well and if you click on it then you can see what the meaning is uh, basically you know dark red would indicate strong negative correlation and uh, dark red will also go if positive depends if there's a plus or minus so you're looking for dark red for strong correlations if it's green or blue green specifically is nothing that much blue is minor orange is is uh, medium correlations. So yeah, under your dollar, uh, basically, uh, no correlation with your yen at the moment, your Swissy pound dollar. The yen is kind of moving on its own. The pound is moving on its own. Yeah, Ron is justfully adding that there are a lot of indicators. Uh, indeed, the, the Renko uh, bar, uh, indicator actually Renko here very useful and a pivot point as well so yeah good good comment indeed very true uh, let's see one more question would you say that if the breakout or golfing large then the retrace will be shallow whereas with small golfing the retrace will be larger uh, 
I honestly don't have any particular strong feelings about that. It it really depends f- from my perspective on um, on certain circumstances. Um, I can see why you think that, like, because smaller one, you think that there's still like more price action ground to to be kind of made. Uh, so there could be, you know, um, more more price movement left with a smaller engulfing twin. Then again, a bigger engulfing twin shows more, to, more participation, shows a, shows a stronger signal than if it's really small. So if it's really small, I would be actually more, more worried probably. Uh, if it's really big, then I would probably want to see a retracement. But I think that I would look at more circumstances like how strong is the support of resistance? Is there a lot of confluence? How strong has the momentum been to the opposite side? What is the trend? So for me, that it's, it's a difficult one. It's a, it's, a, it's a mixture, I think. All right, dollar Audi USD is moving up, but it doesn't look very impulsive. But this could be a correction, uh, and price is reaching the uh, the middle line here on the one hour chart. There's no divergence between these tops, so from that perspective, uh, I think that price could be in a bouncing spot, as it did here, as it did here, when it reached the zero line, as it did here. And here, for that matter, and here, and here, I guess. So could it be again? I guess so. Why not? Um, but uh, let's take a look. You know, one of the probably safer ways to trade it would be to wait for two good bullish candles. Most of the time, two bullish candles is um, a good indication of uh, the completion of a retracement. Or time factor, five to six candles not breaking a low, for instance, here. Five to six candles not breaking a low would have been a good moment. Two bullish candles here nicely. Here, two, five to six candles, two bullish candles. Two bullish candles, three bullish candles, five to six candles not breaking here. So those those things would kind of give an indication. There could be maybe an inverted head and shoulders later on here. So on a 50-minute chart, uh, if price makes a dash up, then kind of corrects slowly to the downside like this. That could be uh, one way of trading at the you know the upside. Like that. All right. Now, from a four hours perspective, this is also looking pretty much like a retracement. Daily perspective, I would say two decent bullish candle yesterday. So, you know, at this moment, I don't think there's anything to stop price from continuing necessarily. Um, this looks like a good channel. And for the moment, as long as the low of yesterday does not get broken, um, I think that today or tomorrow, there's a good chance of continuation. The law of momentum and trend um, probably will, you know, um, how do you say it, will um, prove enough to push this higher. Target 7750, 78. Pound yen kept pushing higher as well, despite the resistances. That's always something you want to be careful of with support of resistance. As long as you keep four hour candles like that, then we shouldn't count on a turnaround. That's why, um, in many cases, I think keeping an eye on price action is a better bet than a pending order necessarily because the thing is we don't know how price is looking as it approaches our pending order. Now some levels, some key confluence levels are so strong 
that the likelihood of price stopping there is is, is decent enough to take to place a pending order to take a trade right there without necessarily waiting for any price action or candlestick patterns that would confirm a turnaround. But if support or resistance is 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 a present, but there's not like extra confluence, then things like this could easily happen. Price just keeps building that momentum. In Forex markets specifically, I, I would say momentum is very important. Uh, support of resistance levels are important too, and very, very key. But if momentum is strong, it will push through it. So support of resistance is more like a heads up. That's where price could stop. But if momentum is strong, it's gonna it's gonna override it. It's gonna push through it. That's what I was warning you yesterday for. That's what happened actually throughout the day. And price blasting through these levels. Any pending orders smashed, most likely. Maybe you're still lucky you have your pending order open with the stop loss that's, that's a bit above this. But I don't think that any trader would feel very comfortable with uh, an order that is still open, considering the strong momentum here, and also on top of that, considering what's now going sideways. So from a wave perspective, or just from momentum and correction perspective. We see strong push up, we see mild sideways movement. From this point of view, um, you know, we shouldn't be surprised if price would move up again. Doesn't have to, but if it does, it's not gonna surprise us due to the strong momentum and sideways correction. It's a typical pattern for continuation upside. Now, in this case, it doesn't have to. And one of the reasons why is because of the fact that we do see uh, still a very strong price on the left showing basically um, a downtrend, a previous downtrend. And this is either going to be a retracement within that downtrend. This could be still, uh, in a way, a lower high. All right. Or this could be a reversal, and this is just a part of a reversal. And in many cases, we'll see a pullback before continuation to build kind of a channel to the upside. In that case, we're still actually missing a higher low. So yes, price could continue higher, but considering the context of this, the, the market structure here, a dip down, even if it were to go up higher or reverse back, is is also very, very likely. So from that perspective, if you get momentum to the upside, but the trend is down, you're kind of in a in a spot where both movements could happen. So that's why at that point, breakouts are important and getting an idea that the breakout is going to occur for instance above this trend line would help us kind of um, uh, sh you know mark levels where we would know which one of the two or not know but estimate when one of the two is going to happen the bigger upside continuation or the break to the downside now this is a bit of a tight wedge in fact at this point so 137.75 could be a bit better, this bottom. And uh, maybe, you know, a push above this trend line here and a close above it would be the indication for upside. And a downside. All right, there's one risk with downside, and that is that this could turn into a bull flag. And basically, if it breaks like this, then hit the 23.6 fib and bounce back up, and then hit the 38.2 fib and bounce back up, and it could actually do something like that, and a later on break for upside. So if if a pattern like that happens, uh, you definitely want to you know, use aggressive trade management, move it to break even, get out of that trade perhaps even, uh, because a pattern like this is not 
you don't want to stay in the short where price is moving uh, this slowly uh, towards these fibs and then using these fibs as support levels. And in fact, if price gets to these fibs, 38.2, for instance, um, and we see a reaction to that, it actually could be interesting to look for the opposite side, the upside, right? Because because of the strong momentum, because of the strong daily candles, and look for a bigger ABC zigzag. Uh, any hesitation, though, for price to move up, if it takes too long, and we see a 38.2 bounce, but then price still hanging around here, then there could be weakness and a, and a further downside. So because of the downtrend and the strong momentum, I'm keeping an eye on how price reacts uh, upon breaks to make a judgment if we're going to get a bigger zigzag up or if this is a retracement for downside. That's the big question. And we don't know the answer really at this point. We can keep an eye on the dollar yen and the, the pound, of course, to get a bit more idea about the pound yen as well. So the pound yen, I think, is is a bit difficult spot at the moment. At the moment, and you know, it's, it's it's maybe a good pair to to skip because of that. Also, pound news tomorrow. So all right, strong correction of the delta cat. That break was not convincing, as I said yesterday. So we're getting a pretty strong correction, and price moving up into resistance again. Um, you know, some reversal traders could easily be looking for shorts in here, I would say. Not a bad momentum riding behind it here. So I could see that uh, idea. Probably, I think maybe the better approach would be to wait for a four-hour candle here. And uh, we could see then, that could be the kickoff for an ABC zigzag there. And it would be a trade that's basically taking a um, false, basically trading a false break and a continuation of this triangle. A bounce off resistance. Well, folks, um, I think that. Those probably, I mean, from a wave perspective, uh, the, the majors seem the most interesting for me. Kiwi's still in this rising wedge. The euro odd isn't a big downtrend, but it's at the bottom. The pound odd is in a good momentum to the upside. We see, uh, we had that box that we were talking about yesterday and the prior momentum to it. So, the, you know, yesterday we were saying a continuation up side is likely this was a good breakout candle and we're seeing a good continuation after that but it could easily be an abc zigzag as well just like on the pound yen uh, so despite the ups you know bullish momentum candles this could be a turning spot too so i'm not maybe a big fan of this one either you're in new zealand in a consolidation pound new zealand moving up despite the downtrend so I don't think these these major kind of crosses are are very interestingly uh, positioned at this point. So I think that um, from my perspective, the euro dollar pound dollar dollar yen are probably the most interesting, and uh, and Aussie. Those four. Any questions or comments? Otherwise. I think that we covered the most important ground. Just remember uh, that you know wave analysis is something you definitely want to take step by step. You want to build experience in uh, before you use it too quickly and rely too heavily on using it for trading decisions. Tomorrow we'll talk about how to trade effectively with popular chart indicators. Tonight, Dennis is going to take a look at his price trading. Price Action Trading School. Next week, we have recaps, uh, live trading webinars, and we take a look at uh, 
scalping and breakouts and fakeouts. Yes, indeed. It's the price action trading school tonight for uh, the uh, lessons 16 to 20. Indeed, question and answers. Uh, what you can do is, uh, if you're looking for the lessons themselves, uh, they should be available on YouTube. What you could do is go to youtube.com. I will show you uh, how to do that. Then search for Admiral Markets. Uh, and uh, there are several Admiral Markets channels. There are some, uh, the main one. Where can you find the webinar? Or you would find it by going to education. Go to AdmiralMarkets.com. Go to education and webinars. If you're looking for the YouTube channel, just go to YouTube. Go to Admiral Markets. Search. And then go to playlists. And then look for Price Action Trading School. Click on that. And you'll see all of them right here. All right? So that's how you would find the previous ones. If you're looking for the, the current one, how to subscribe, you want to go to education and then click on webinars. And then you want to subscribe by clicking on these blue buttons, register online. Well, folks, thanks for so much for being here. Wish you all great trading and see you all soon. Cheers.